Hello, my name is Jacqueline Gutierrez and I'm working with Evelyn morales Jonin on this project with the Wi-Fi Pineapple Tetra. So we're going to be doing a little demonstration today to show how to use the web interface and the console to be able to perform man-in-the-middle attacks using this uh, Tetra. So the console is uh, has Linux built in and we're going to be using Kali Linux on a virtual machine to conduct our attacks. So what is the Wi-Fi Pineapple Tetra? Well, it's a wireless auditing platform that was created by Hack5 LLC and this is the sixth generation that we're going to be using which is the Tetra and the Nano. Before that they had a Mark IV and a Mark V versions um, but this has really stepped it up and this has a lot more features. So it's used mainly for wireless penetration testing and built into the Wi-Fi Pineapple they have uh, something called Pineapp tools and they have a reconnaissance, man in the middle, tracking, logging and reporting, all of that is built in right into your Wi-Fi Pineapple and on top of that there are also some modules that you can use to do additional attacks and um, do more things with it. So let's uh, get on to it and let me show you how you set it up and how to access the web console. Alright, I'm on my Kali Linux virtual machine right now and this is where I'm going to be accessing the Wi-Fi Pineapple Tetra and where what I'll be using to conduct my attacks. Kali Linux is a distribution of Linux that was built specially for penetration testing and it has lots of great built-in tools already in it so it's a wonderful operating system to use when you're conducting any kind of penetration testing. So I've connected on uh, my Wi-Fi Pineapple I have uh, the USB ports plugged in and I have it connected to the Ethernet port on the device. Um, the light is blue so it's ready to go so I'm going to check the connection now here the terminal window to make sure that I can see that Ethernet port. So I'm going to type in ifconfig and this is my Ethernet port that my virtual machine is getting internet from from my regular computer and ETH1 ETH is the uh, Pineapple Tetra. So you see here the IP address is 172.16.42.186 this is the IP address for the Wi-Fi Pineapple. So um, using the 172.16.42.1 we can go on ahead and connect to the web interface. So let's do that now with uh, the browser here built into Kali. So it's 172.16.42.1 and the port is 1471. So it's going to prompt me for my password, which I have saved in here. Okay, so I'm logged in to my device right now. This is the main screen right here. This is the dashboard that tells you um, the status of the device, how long it's been up, how many clients are connected, and how many SSIDs we have in the pool. Now the first thing you, you want to verify before doing anything else with the Wi-Fi Pineapple is that it is connected to the internet, that it is actively receiving an internet connection. So uh, we're going to attempt to load some bulletins here from wifipineapple.com and if this successfully loads them then we know that it's getting internet, but if it does not, since I haven't set it up, it shouldn't connect to the internet and it's not so we're gonna have to um, share the internet connection that's on this virtual machine with the pineapple so the way we do that is we download the script from Wi-Fi pineapple.com and uh, then we're going to run it and it'll automatically set it up for us It's downloading the script right now from Wi-Fi Pineapple. Just give it a second. Then after we, we receive it, we're going to convert it into an executable file so that we can run it. Okay, now let's run it. Okay, great, and this is the main screen right here. Let's do the guided setup so we can configure it for the first time. All right, so I'm going to disconnect the Wi-Fi Pineapple. 
and press enter. Yes, that's my default gateway. Default interface. And I'm going to reconnect the Wi-Fi pineapple. Okay, so now it's checking for the pineapple. I'd like to also mention that it's extremely important to make sure that the Wi-Fi pineapple also has some sort of connection to a power source, such as the power brick or the battery packs that come with it, not just the Ethernet ports, because that is not sufficient to allow it to run all of the attacks. Okay, so this is the correct interface. And now it's all set up, so now we're going to connect. And here we go, we're connected. Great. So now let's go back to our web interface and let's take a look at it. Let's see if we can load some bulletins now. It should load those bulletins right up. And here we go. Great, so we have internet connectivity. So now let's do a, a walkthrough to ex so I can explain to you what all of these tabs are and what you can do with this pineapple. So the first thing that, that you want to do is you go to this tab, it's re Recon for Reconnaissance, and with this is how we're going to find all of the access points that are around us, information about them, and the clients that are connected to them as well. So we're going to click on here to find the access point with the associated clients, then we're going to scan. And they have multiple intervals here. You could scan every 15 seconds, 30 seconds, minute, 10 minutes, etc. Let's leave it at 15. And you could also have a continuous scan. So let's run it now. And over here, it's going to populate the list of all of the SSIDs with their MAC addresses, along with every single client that's connected to that SSID at the time. Or the clients that are actively connected, meaning that they're sending packets back and forth. If they're just idle and they're not sending any packets, the Wi-Fi Pineapple won't pick them up. Okay, so here we go. Here's the screen with all of the SSIDs. There's a hidden network right here. See, this is 100%. This is the signal, so it's extremely strong. This is the one that's here in my home. I have uh, one device connected to it. And... Um, this is a Starbucks Wi-Fi that I set up to do this. Uh, there currently aren't any active devices connected to it. Let's see if we can get some devices actively connected to it. And it'll pop up later and then we can use that um, as an example because we do not want to use any of these other ones because these are other people and it is not legal to actively view their traffic and intercept their traffic using this device. And as you can see, there's quite a few hidden SSIDs as well. Then down here is a, another section which I find quite interesting, that it also includes unassociated clients, their MAC addresses. And these clients are devices that are not connected to any Wi-Fi, um, any access points right now, but they're sending out a beacon requesting for their open access points. So that's interesting. Okay, well I know since I know this one is mine, we're going to use this one here as the example. So we're going to click on here. And uh, these are uh, various options that it has. You could add this MAC address to the PineApp filter, and I'll show you what that does in a second. And then with this here, you can deauthenticate the client from the access point where it's um, currently connected to so that you can intercept it when it tries to reconnect. There's various options here from 1 to 10. Uh, 1 is just a standard number of beacon requests that it sends, and then um, each of these is a multiple of it. So this is 2 times more, 3 times more, etc. So let's do 6. Let's click here. Okay, great. Now let's go take a look and see what happened with those filters. Okay, so right now it's um, in deny mode. That, that MAC address that I just ad added to this list will not be able to connect through my thing, through my uh, Wi-Fi pineapple. 
but every other MAC address will will be able to. So we're going to switch this to allow. So that means that this is the only device that will be able to connect to my access point. And you can do the same thing with the SSIDs as well. So the next thing that I'd like to go over here is the Pine app. Now over here, these um, were configured from a previous session. But um, the screen gets distorted when it gets large for some reason. I'm not sure why. Hold on. So let me just open this up a little bit like this. Okay. So these are the different options when you're going to set this up for the first time. This right here, Allow Associations, is what will allow your device to become the man in the middle. So you want to make sure you have this checked off and check off this uh, probes and association logs. This will uh, uh, put create logs for every single probe and association that has been done with the device. Here is how we have this enabled, the PineApp daemon, so that this can run and it'll, it will be actively uh, trying to have clients connect to it. And then we could also choose these options, capture SSIDs to pool, beacon response, and broadcast the pool. So we're going to save these settings. And also these are a, a couple of more options here for the beacon response interval and the SSID pool interval. You can pick from low, normal, to aggressive depending on uh, your preference. So we're just going to keep it on normal for right now. And here in my SSID pool, I have um, some SSIDs. And what's interesting here is these two here, Dog Zone 5 and Dog Zone 2.4. These are my two hidden SSIDs. And this was able to detect the name. So that's interesting. And this is the, the Starbucks Wi Fi that we're, we're trying to work with. Okay, so. Let's um, take a look at the dashboard and see if there's any connected clients at this time. Look, we have one client connected. Let's take a look. Oh, look, that's my f my cell phone. It's connected to the Starbucks Wi-Fi. It's on the it's an Android, and it has the IP address and the MAC address. So this gives you the information of who's connected to to you and who. So all of the traffic that will streams on the phone now will travel through the pineapple first so that we can look at the packets and see what the they're doing. <coughs> Sorry, that was my dog. Okay, great. So let's uh, take a look at the modules. So modules are another great feature of the Wi-Fi pineapple. Not only does this do man in middle attacks, but it also uh, does a lot more. So you can get modules here from wi pineapple.com and these are created by users. Any user can create these modules and they do various different things. See this one is called Dwall. It says who created it, the size, and what type it is. So this does uh, displays HTTP URLs, cookies, post data, images, etc. So this one could be interesting. Let's install that one. So it's going to download the module and install it. They have uh, another de-authentication attack. So this one de-authenticates all of them. Instead of having to manually click each one and de-authenticate it one by one, if you want to do it for a large number of act, a uh, large number of devices, you can use this. So we can try this as well. And they have a, a few others down here as well. They have quite quite a few here. And they anytime any user can add them on. So this is really great. It could be really customizable. We could even create one ourselves. So let's take a look at the modules now that we've downloaded. Let's go to this one and take a look at it. Okay, look, so here it will show the images, I guess, and um, 
the URLs, cookies, and data. So let's enable this. Let's start listening. And now that we have my phone as a client, let's look for some images and see what we find. So I'm searching for dogs now. Let's see if we find the image of it. Oh, look, there it is. There's the dog that I just found from my cell phone. Let's see if it finds the other image. Well, that's great. Okay, so let's take a, a look at the tracking here. Or the let's take a look at the logging. So this right here is going to show all of the probe requests and associations here. So all of these SSIDs have done probe requests. Here's my dog zone five. Starbucks Wi Fi. And many more. All of these are by the by all of the access points nearby. You can use this to remove s duplicates so that it could be less. So now here we're only seeing um, ones that aren't duplicates. Smokes up Miami. <laughs> Alright, the next section we're going to go over is the networking section. Now this section here shows you the gateway and uh, the, des the default destination and the subnet mask. So this is the network that we're on right now. And you can change it here if you'd like. And also change the interface that it's on. And you can click update through here. And then down here, you can set up uh, access points here. Um, for other users to see. In here we have an open SSID, I called it open Wi-Fi and uh, the users can directly log into here um, and directly connect to our to our interface. And then uh, the management SSID I wrote um, two wire and some numbers and this is to emulate like the AT&T Wi-Fi that those are standard, a lot of people just leave those numbers in there. So if anyone does some sort of war driving or any scanning and they see this, they won't be tempted by it or they won't think anything of it because it's just like all the other ones. So it'll blend in well. <coughs> and then uh, we also have this over here, uh, the Wi-Fi client mode that shows uh, the interface here that we're on, which is the uh, wireless one. And this is the interface that's actively looking for clients right now. And down here is some more information here. Let's open this up or make it this way because this has some issues with the resolution. So this is the uh, advanced area and this shows you all of the interfaces right now to connect to the internet. This is one for my computer. This is the one that the pineapple is on. We have a, a local loop back here. And then these are the wireless interfaces that were created by the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Okay, and then we also have a, a configuration tab here, and this you can just use to change your password, change your time zone. And then down here, this is the, the landing page. I have it disabled right now because I'm not using it, but in, in this section you can write some HTML code that will show how what the user sees when they first log in. It'll be like a splash page that they see. You know, when you sometimes log in to some uh, open Wi-Fi like Starbucks, they'll have a page that says, welcome, please click here to accept the terms and conditions. So you can create all of that here using this area. And then in the advanced section over here, we have a few more things. Here it shows you um, the disk and the internal part of the Wi-Fi Tetra, how the different partitions of it. This is uh, based off of Linux. 
and then um, some additional information here uh, about the USB but I don't have a, a USB inserted into it right now and then here you could check for upgrades so make sure you have the latest upgrades And this concludes the tutorial of the web interface for the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Next, Evelyn is going to show how to use the web uh, to use the terminal window with with SSH to access even more features on the Wi-Fi Pineapple and completely customize it. Hello, this is Evelyn, and I'll be going through how to enter the Wi-Fi Pineapple using Command Console. I will be using Putty to enter the Wi-Fi Pineapple through Command Control instead of the web page that you, you are viewing right now is the 17.16.42.1. Uh, PuTTY is a secure remote control terminal that allow Windows and Unix users to make a, sh a sure, secure shell connection to a, a client. I downloaded PuTTY from PuTTY.org and you enter the page, scroll down to putty.exe click on it and install it I have already <coughs> downloaded it and installed it uh, once you do that you double click on the icon go to host name type in that same IP address for the Wi-Fi pineapple 172.16.42.1 keep the port 20 at 22 Go ahead and open it. It'll tell you, and it'll ask you for your username and your password, similar to how the web page is set up. But here you're doing it remotely. Go ahead and input my information. And here we are. We have entered Wi-Fi Pineapple. Alright, so the first thing we'll do is uh, check our configuration or and our Wi-Fi adapters. Uh, the command for that is if config enter, and as you can see, we have several uh, Wi-Fi adapters. One of the commands you can use is uh, to turn off one of the adapters, and you can go ahead and do that by if config tell it what you want. Uh, if config is the name of the program we are using, uh, we're going to take down WLAN1 and we're going to say bring it down and check if that went through. As you can see, it's no longer there. We can bring it back up. With up instead of down. There you go, it's back up here. So let's clear this and we'll go with some uh, simple commands. Like if you want to check what's inside your directories and what's inside the folders, um, you can go ahead. The first one is ls, which lists all of the directories in that folder. And as you can, you can see that we only really have one folder. It's called portals, which is uh, under the module evil portals where you can do an attack through uh, through that fashion um, you can enter portals by saying uh, change directory p and you can type it out or you can say change directory the first letter of the folder tab and it auto -fill fills it for you ls list directory you can see that within the portals we have a folder called Starbucks uh, underscore Wi-Fi and you want to say hey let's go in there let's go further so change directory Starbucks and in here we have um, four folders I mean correction we have four files um, and if you want to go ahead and like see where you are um, with if, if you've done a lot of uh, commands and you don't really know where you, what folder you're in you can hit PWD and it tells you right there that you're in your root folder within portals and Starbucks 
and then you want to go back so you're within a Starbucks file right now. So you want to go back to portals. You just say cd dot dot. Correction, cd space dot dot. And then you're back into just seeing the Starbucks Wi-Fi folder. You want to go a little further. And now you're back into portals. Other uh, keys that you can hit um, man manual PWD and that goes into manual mode okay so now that we've touched up on these basic keyword or key basic uh, commands um, let's go ahead and sniff some packets over the Wi-Fi network uh, we've also included a link to 20 about 20 uh, basic commands um, with this video so go ahead and check it out if you're interested all right the first thing is to check is to put the pineapple in monitor mode monitor mode allows the wireless card to pick up traffic from all the wireless networks in range instead of just the one that you are connected tools used to put your card in monitor mode um, is uh, the airmon hyphen ng which comes with the pineapple and you don't have to do anything but just call the command all right so um, we're gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna say air mon let's first clear this up air mon ng we're gonna go into monitor mode and here it gives you all your adapters and you want to say let's go ahead and do it with WLAN so you your, your air mon ng is the program that you're using you're gonna say we're gonna start it up and we're gonna start it up with WLAN 1 hit enter All right, so we're entering, we've enabled the monitor mode uh, and it's given us an alert. It says found one process that could cause trouble. Um, these are other programs that can cause problems too. And if we do come across some problems and we want to kill that program, there's the command air mon ng you're going to check for that file and then you're going to go ahead and kill the file uh, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, sniff some packets so air o dump ng the, uh, actually let me show you that we are actually in um, monitor mode this config you can see that now LAN mon LAN one has turned into mon and into monitor mode. So we're gonna say air arrow dump ng there you go starting to sniff some packets uh, in order to stop it you just hit control C and all right so the top portion of the of what you're seeing right now is telling you that these are your uh, the Mac address the BSS ID the power strength the, and um, beacon you have your encryption you have a couple open packets and here here you go this is the wi-fi pineapple we named it Wi uh, pineapple and these are other um wi-fi's around my area Rumi's connection and then down here you have your the device's mac address the MAC address of the access point that it is connected to and then we have some you know the power rate and probe 
uh, what it is saying is that your device or any de any wireless device uh, are constantly scanning for saved networks within range. So they're constantly sending, um, if I was previously connected to FIU wireless, then it's constantly asking for FIU wireless. Um, so these probes are useful with the Pine 8B allow assurance mode when you click that in uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple. And that, that uh, kind of tells the, <coughs> the device that it's looking for if it's looking for xyz then the wi-fi pineapple says yes that's me come and join me enter my network and everything goes bad from there all right so what about if you want to save a file you want to save this information you can go ahead and hit arrow dump ng the program hyphen w for we're going to save it and then you're going to name it. So I'm going to say my first dump and the interface one mon. I'm going to go ahead and enter. Uh, what did I do wrong? Arrow. Oh. So if you don't want to like type in all the time what you've already previously typed, you can hit the arrow up arrow key and brings it up for you. I misspelled the program and there it's executing. We're gonna hit control C again because that's plenty for us. And let's see if it's in our files. And we, so we hit LS, there you go. My first, my first dump. Oh, I have a couple, my first dump. And so um, let's say if you wanna go ahead and just remove that, you, you You've decided you don't want to keep that. You say RM my first dump, or you can say my asterisk because you, you can notice all of them starts with M, M, and then MY asterisk. You're going to include all of them. Let's check if it, there you go, it's gone. Removed portals. All right. This is the end of my tutorial on how to use the command line. Again, there's plenty of other um, resources out there that we've included in the link. Check out hack5.org, uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple Wiki page. Um, and then in order to exit properly out of this program, you would hit exit or you you can close it, but the proper way is to just type in exit and I'll exit you out. Thank you.